Uh, hey guys, Stephen from LOJ, back again with John from PSI. Uh, now we're going to talk about the LS2 engines, which we uh, spoke briefly to in the first two videos. Uh, we're going to give the LS2 its own video, and here it is. Uh, we're going to talk about the physical characteristics of the LS2 and the EFI um, characteristics of the LS2 and why it creates headaches, not so much for me from a swap kit perspective, but definitely for John from an EFI perspective and for me in a tech support perspective, trying to support the EFI aspect of it. So, um, so the um, LS2 came out in 2005 and it was in the Corvette only yep. and it was a 24X engine. Okay. Now, as we discussed about the Gen 4 engines, um, all LS2s, even the 24X versions, had a front-mounted cam sensor and low-mounted NOx sensors and a four-bolt flange for the throttle body. Yep. So those are easy ways to determine if you have an actual LS2. Yep. Um, also, they also they also had aluminum aluminum engine blocks yep. as opposed to a six-liter that would have been in a truck like an OQ9 or an OQ4, which would have had a cast iron block. Yep. Um, in 2006, the Corvette went to the 58X version of the LS2. So physically everything looked the same except the controller was different and the crank sensor was different. And the cam sensor, cam sensor was the same. The cam sensor, as far as the part number, it may have changed. I don't know offhand. Okay. Um, however, the cam sprocket obviously changed because it went to 58X. Yep. So that kind of covers the Corvette. And then the Corvette from 2006 up until 2008 when they went to the LS3, those LS2s were basically the same. So um, then now you also have LS2s that came in the Pontiac GTO and that came out in 2000. Well, 2004 is when the GTO started with the 5.7 24X motor, which looked like a Gen 3. Yep. Then in 2005 and 2006, which were the remainder of the production run on those, they went to the Gen, Gen 3.5, Gen 4, 24X LS2. Right. So that, again, it had a front-mounted cam sensor, but it was a 24X engine that ran on the E40 controller, which is what the Corvette ran on in 2005. Right. Then the Trailblazers, the Trailblazer SS, also had an LS2. And in the early years, it was a 24X reluctor wheel on the crank, 1X on the cam, and it uh, had a E40 controller yeah. for um, the Gen 3.5. And, and, yeah. Yeah. and then uh, it was 2005 or 6, the Trailblazer went to a 58X, but externally the motor still looked the same. Yeah, and it was it was probably sometime in the 2007 time frame it went to 58X. Um, but again, externally, they all look the same. And now from, from John's perspective, that really creates more of a headache than it does for, for me, like I said earlier, because those Gen 3.5 LS2s, the ones that had the cam sensor mounted in the front of the block instead of in the rear, and the knock sensors low mounted instead of in the valley, and a four bolt drive by wire throttle body instead of a uh, drive by cable or three bolt throttle body. Um, that has a unique wiring harness and a unique PCM. It's called an E40 PCM. Um, the Gen 3 motors, all the other ones, they either have what I refer to a red and blue or a green and blue PCM. It was red and blue if it was drive by cable and green and blue if it was drive by wire. But the um, and all of the Gen 4 motors, other than the 58X LS2s, are, including the 58X LS2s, not the 24X LS2s, had an E38 PCM. Or, or an E67. They use some E67s in some various applications. But the E38 is the, the most popular one. It, was, it had the fastest processor. Okay. Um, you know, actually, when, when we developed our first Gen 4 harnesses, we, we made a decision, a conscious decision, to go to the E38 because um, it was the fastest controller. We felt that we could, um, there was a lot of commonality between all the architectures that we could keep um, our cost and the cost of our customers down by just standardizing with the E38. And then we based the tunes based on, you know, different transmissions and things of that nature. Um, we ran the E38 across the board. Right. Now what we've done is we've gone back and we've said, okay, well, you know what? We do have quite a few customers that find themselves with these, you know, 0506 GTO or Trailblazer SS or, um, 24X, the, the one year of 24X Corvette engines, yeah. and they still want it. They want to use the drive-by wire, and rather, and it's 24X. So what we do is we said, you know what, we'll we'll start making an E40 harness. So we do make an E40 harness, and we cover, we pretty much cover, we actually do cover any type of um, electronic or or, or arch block architecture that you could 
you could possibly imagine when it comes to Gen 3, Gen 4, or Gen 3 and a half right. engines. So like, I know, I guess from a business perspective, you were reluctant originally to do the E40 because it was such a, a rare case comparatively to all of the other LS engines that are out there. And I think the original um, workaround was to run a, a red and blue PCM and mount the Gen 3 Valley knock sensors on the side of the block and convert it to drive-by cable instead of drive-by wire. Well, you, you, or use the TAC module. Or you like, can use the TAC module. We'll talk correct. about that more later correct. again. But, but you can see why the LS2, uh, hopefully you can see why by just watching this video, that the LS2 from an electronics control perspective is so different and can vary within just the LS2 itself, whether it's a 24X LS2 or a 58X LS2, that it, it can create a lot of headaches trying to figure out exactly what ECU and controller and all you need. So I guess the what comes down to the brass tacks of this is that if you've got yourself an LS2 and you're doing a conversion and you don't know what you have, you can call us at LOJ, you can call the guys at PSI and talk to them and they can tell you what, what color sensors to look for to determine if it's 58X or 24X. And then either of us can help you make sure you get the right harness and computer to match your engine um, in your swap. And, and just to take that one you know, brief step further, um, we get a lot of people that try to Frankenstein, what we call Frankenstein motors. And you know, they'll, they'll take a six liter, they'll throw an LS3 throttle uh, intake on it, or they'll use this throttle body or this transmission. Um, just because things will bolt together or things will connect doesn't mean things always work or talk yeah. nicely to each other. So um, a lot of times you have to have the correct operating system on the computers, you have to have the right parameters, or what will end up happening is things will go into limp mode, trans won't shift, things won't start. There's, there's numerous things that can happen and it just becomes frustrating for the customer. So that is one of the things I know you pride yourself on and we at PSI, we also pride ourselves on, is if you call us, you're not just getting a good quality part, you're also getting years of experience and knowing what works with what and we're going to send you down the most cost-effective route to get your swap up and running. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I hope you appreciated this video. I hope we didn't confuse things more, but uh, I guess the real, the real point of it was to illustrate how different the LS2 is from all the other Gen 3 and Gen 4 motors and help you understand why, um, if you happen, happen to swap an LS2, why it would be a good idea to talk to either of us first before you start trying to figure out your wiring or anything at all. So, all right, thanks, guys.